Fox 61 News at 10 starts now. Tonight at 10, long live the Queen's legacy. The two sides of the ocean have never been closer. We look back on the life and legacy of the longest ruling British monarch and her history in Connecticut. Robbed at a bus stop. One town on edge after a child is attacked while waiting to go to school. Pay tribute to the people that lost their lives. Remembering 9-11, how Connecticut is honoring the thousands of victims on the day that changed America forever. And a seafood warning tonight. Lobster might be hard to find these days. The concerns over these crustaceans. We begin tonight with people all over the world remembering the life and legacy of Queen Elizabeth II. She died today at the age of 96 at her castle in the Scottish Highlands, surrounded by members of the royal family. Queen Elizabeth was the longest reigning British monarch leading the United Kingdom for 70 years. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jen Bernstein. And I'm Ben Goldman. Tonight, we're reflecting on Queen Elizabeth's impact around the world even here in the state of Connecticut. Here's a live look tonight at Buckingham Palace in London, where it's now Friday morning in Europe. Many people across the UK will soon wake up for the very first time with Queen Elizabeth no longer leading the country. Earlier today, thousands of mourners were outside of that palace to pay their respects to the queen. The notice of her death was hung on the gates outside of the palace this afternoon. Her son Charles now is king. A later statement saying that he is, quote, experiencing a moment of the greatest sadness for me and all members of my family, end quote. Charles added that the Queen's death will be felt all over the world. Queen Elizabeth was born on April 21st, 1926. Her father, King George VI, took the throne in 1936, and she became his heir at just 10 years old. Then in 1952, she was in Kenya when she learned of her father's death. She became queen at just 25 years old. Her coronation in 1953 was the first broadcast on television. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Queen Elizabeth became the UK's leader as it was still recovering from World War II and losing most of its colonial empire. She's seen by many in Britain as a steady hand, guiding the country through many turbulent times, like financial hardships in the 80s, joining and then leaving the European Union, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic. Her very last action as queen to formally approve the new prime minister of the UK. Liz Truss took over for Boris Johnson, who resigned after several scandals earlier this year. Truss is the 15th prime minister to serve under Queen Elizabeth. The first was Winston Churchill. The death of Her Majesty the Queen is a huge shock to the nation and to the world. Queen Elizabeth II was the rock on which modern Britain was built. It's an extraordinary achievement to have presided with such dignity and grace for 70 years. Her, her life of service stretched beyond most of our living memories. And a beautiful sign of hope for the UK a few hours after the Queen's death. This video shows a rainbow over Buckingham Palace as mourners placed bouquets at the same gates where her death announcement was posted. Connecticut is also honoring Queen Elizabeth's memory, including a visit that she paid to our state. In fact, she stopped in the city of New Haven once in the 1970s, and a piece of that very moment lives at the city's museum. Fox 61's Alicia Machado joins us live there with how the Queen is being remembered tonight. Alicia. Yeah, Ben, Queen Elizabeth II actually made that stop in New Haven as part of a trip to New England for the bicentennial celebration marking 200 years since the founding of the United States in 1776. Now, while it was a short trip, locals remember it well. Historic moments frozen in time. Nearly half a century ago, Queen Elizabeth II, thousands of miles away from Buckingham Palace, visiting Connecticut. Looking back on a piece of history, we revisit Queen Elizabeth II's stop in New Haven, Connecticut, during a visit to New England. These photos shot by Jean Gorlick, then a photographer for the New Haven Register. This is the Queen with Ella Grasso. 
the governor of Connecticut, and over here at the left is Prince Philip. The photographs are archived at the Whitney Library inside the New Haven Museum. Librarian Ed Serrato showed us the Queen's arrival in New Haven on the Royal Yacht Britannia, July 10th, 1976, part of the Queen's visit to the United States for the nation's bicentennial celebration. Serrato grew up nearby, then 21 years old. I remember it well. A friend and I, we went to the top of the cliffs at Fort Hale Park and we watched the, uh, the ship come in the harbor. The Queen attended events in New York City before sailing to New Haven, according to documents in the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Library. Here, the governor, Ella Grasso, and the mayor of New Haven, Frank Logue, met the royal couple and presented them with gifts, including a pewter chess set and a pewter plate commemorating the country's bicentennial. Big news. It was, it was the bicentennial celebration was big for the entire summer. You know? And to think that the Queen would come to New Haven was pretty incredible. Serato, locals and Brits in Connecticut saddened to hear of the Queen's death Thursday at the age of 96. It's sad. I mean, she's been a part of, well, everyone's life for how many years? She's still been an incredible figure and role model in our lives for um, patience, if anything, and a real uh, real sense of service and duty. Quinnipiac University history professor Christine Keneally looking back on her life and legacy. Here is a woman who devoted her life to public service for 70 years and did it with great dignity, often with kindness, with understanding. And there's a feeling that we will not see the like of this woman again. She was unique and she, in many ways, is irreplaceable. She brought the monarchy forward in a way that also held on to what was the best from the past. Here in Connecticut, Governor Lamont directed flags lowered to have staff in honor of the Queen. Now, here at the museum, Serato says people are welcome to come and visit. Take a look at the Bicentennial Collection. Just call ahead or email to make an appointment. We're live in New Haven tonight. Alicia Machado, Fox 61 News. Fascinating piece, Alicia. Thank you very much. And we have much more co coverage of the Queen's death coming up at 1030. Our Verify team explains how the royal succession plan works. We'll also hear how President Biden is remembering the Queen and what the economic impact of her death will be for the UK. We'll be talking about it for days and probably weeks to come. All right, let's get a check on the weather watch here. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us. Rach, all eyes are now on the weekend. Uh, yeah, and it was a top 10 weather day today. We're going to do it again tomorrow, and this weekend looks fantastic as well. And I think a little something for everyone, which we'll talk more about in just a moment. Right now, temperatures in the upper 50s to right around 60 degrees. It is an open up the windows kind of night. No AC required with overnight lows dipping back into the low to mid 50s inland. Upper 50s at the Connecticut shoreline. You may find yourself reaching for that hot cup of coffee come tomorrow morning. Kids at the bus stop starting off in the 50s. If they need a light layer in the morning, you can certainly ditch it by the afternoon with high temperatures climbing up around the 80 degree mark. Overall, we're looking at another day with low humidity, plenty of sunshine and another cool and comfortable evening for tomorrow night. Heading into the weekend, it gets even warmer for Saturday. We'll see highs in the mid 80s, but more clouds for the second half of the weekend on Sunday. We'll have your full weekend forecast and look ahead to rain chances next week. Plus, Plus, we've got the new U.S. Drought Monitor report, what it reveals for our current drought status coming up. Thank you very much. Uh, new at 10 tonight, police in Woolkit are looking for a man suspected of robbing a convenience store there with a knife. This happened at the Shell gas station on Woolkit Road just before 1.30 this afternoon. Police say the man drove off in this car right here that you see on your screen. That was parked behind the store on Wakeley Road. He went south on Wolcott Road in Waterbury. Anyone with information about this case should call Wolcott Police.